What's up, YouTube? Bob the Wimple back with another week of video. This is number three of four. You know the intro by now. Optic sucks. Dr. Sickleman's awesome. Questions 15, no, 16 through 20. Let's get to it. Number 16. How much does a 15 prism diopter prism bend light in degrees? So here, all you need to know is that uh, the prism diopter divided by two gives you the, the approximate um, degree of um, bending that occurs. So, so 15 divided by 2 gives you closest to uh, 8.53. Um, so B is the answer there. And you know, we know this concept, um, or we may you may be familiar with it. Uh, uh, so uh, let me see if I can draw something out real quick. Um, sort of got some practical use. So if this is, um, let me draw my crappy eye here. Uh, let's say we were in clinic and someone's got strabismus and we want to measure it using the uh, the light reflex and you you're looking at the et for example and this is the eye that's turning in um you look at the light reflex which prism do you go and grab first to estimate to measure the et well depending on where the light reflex is um you know where which prism doctor to grab and so you use the 30 60 90 rule is what i think about so if it's about right there at the edge of the pupil then you know that equates to about a 30 Prism, to, prism to after prism. If it's in the middle of the iris, in mid iris, um, there's your 60 prism to after. And then if it's sort of like on the outer edge of the sclera or the border, somewhere around there, um, 90 prism to after. So that's your 30, 60, 90 rule that I've sort of committed to memory. And we know this equates to um, about uh, 15, 30, and 45 degrees. Um, so, you know, it's just half, 30, 15, 60, 30, 90, 45. Um, so yeah, prism doctors, by the way, two gives you the degrees of bend, of bendage. Number 17, a Galilean telescope that magnifies 4x needs to be made. You already have a plus five objective. Uh, what lens do you need for the eyepiece? So this is a simple formula, um, the eyepiece over the objective. Uh, equals the magnification of a telescope. So in this case, we have, we need a mag of 4x. Um, and we already have the objective, which is 5. Um, and then we need to figure out the eyepiece here. So we just multiply 5 times 4, it gives you 20. Um, and then also, you should need to know that for a uh, Galilean telescope, the eyepiece is going to be um, a minus lens. And I have a video on that. So just check out, I'll put a link in the corner here, just check that out, and I go into uh, more detail about a Galilean telescope and make and break it down to where it's pretty simple to understand and you can make, you can actually, ma actually make one with some loose lenses in clinic with just a few seconds. Um, so be sure to check that out. Um, okay, eyepiece over objective equals magnification. With a Galilean telescope, the negative is, in the, is um, the eyepiece. Number 18, an aquarium has a depth of 25 centimeters. A rock is viewed from the from above the aquarium. The water, of course, with the index of refraction of 1.33, is then removed and replaced with silicone oil, 1.4. How does the apparent location of the rock appear when viewed through air, water, and oil? I've already drawn these out here when I did the from when I did it before, but I'm gonna do it again just to demonstrate things. So uh, first, if we just imagine that we're viewing um, we're viewing this rock. Here's our guy. Say we're viewing this rock um, through air. There's no water in the pool. We're just gonna view it directly. Uh, actually, the long light should be drawn, the arrow should be drawn this way because the light is being reflected off the rock and going into uh, our um, viewer's eyes, okay? So it's not gonna be bent at all because there's no change, there's no interface. Um, it's just going through air the entire time. Now, if we add water into the pool, now uh, the light that's being reflected, uh, it, it, you know, light is actually not a straight line or point. Um, it's, a, it, it's a radiating wave, okay? So it's like this. And you can imagine this is people, like a, um, a line of, um, like a marching band, a horizontal line of people marching, okay? And so when they get, when the marching line gets to about here, the people that are out of the water are going to be moving a lot faster than the people who are still trudging through the water. So it's going to result in, you know, a, a, um, 
a bending of the light. So the light wave um, is going to be going like, like this, and then it's going to turn as it gets into the less dense air, and it's going to eventually make it to our eyes. And we're going, if you trace this line back, that's where we would interpret the rock being in water. And then if we make this oil the same thing, but to it a, um, a greater extent, it would be like this maybe. I don't know, I'm just... Okay, so it would appear um, closest in air and then water and then oil. And I have a demonstration of that um, with water at least. So here I have two bowls, each with a penny in the same spot at the bottom. The bowl on the left has water in it, obviously. Um, so if we turn and look at an angle, we can see that the one with the water appears to be further away because the light's being bent. You can see it clears the rim pretty easily, where the one on the right um, you can, with no water is barely can barely be seen over the rim of the bowl. Here's another example of a dude um, in the water, and you can see that his legs look like they're really small and far away. And here's probably the best example where you can see the the ruler under the water seems like it bends away from you. Pretty neat. So number 19, we got a patient with a minus five contact lens, wants to move, get uh, the same correction, but in glasses. Um, the vertex is in 15 millimeters. So what's the what's gonna be the new power of the glasses? So for this, what I like to do is just take my uh, vergence U plus D equals V um, knowledge and apply that to this concept of the far point rule. Um, if you're into just strictly using formulas, you can do what's called the um, lens effectivity uh, formula, but I'm not too familiar with it. I'll give you a quick glimpse of it. Um, this is that formula here. Uh, like I said, I don't, to me, it's just easier to use the virgins stuff that we've already reviewed. So, um, uh, so I'm just going to show you that first. What you, you need to know, the, you should know the far point rule. And that is if the far point of the eye is equal to the uh, focal point of the uh, lens, then the refraction is corrected. Okay, so if we imagine um, an eye here, and let's um, let's make this a myopic eye. Um, the far point, if we imagine a point of illumination right here, the light's going to diverge um, at every, everywhere out of the eye. It's going to hit the go through the converging system of the eye and be converged back into a point somehow, some some distance out here. Um, this distance here. This is this is the far point. That's the furthest away that um, the eye can be in focus. And as long as our lens, our diverging lens, has this same focal point, then the refractive air is going to be corrected. So if we imagine parallel light rays coming in like this, so our vergence is zero, then it's going to be diverged away. Okay, and then we trace things back. And the focal point now is equal to the far point, so the corrective, the correction is going to be, um, so the refractive error is going to be corrected, and the patient will see Plano now. Um, same thing for a hyperope. I'll show you what that looks like. Um, so if we imagine again the point of illumination here, light is going out, diverging. It's the converging system of the eye. It's converged, but not entirely so it's still divergent never forming an image out here so then you have to trace it back and here's the far point of the eye so again what do we do well we just draw our glasses and we have um you know parallel light rays coming in towards the eye just like before and it the light rays, if this is set up, the focal point is um, matches the ref the far point, then this will be these two parallel light rays will be converged like this, and the refractive error will be corrected. Um, so that's the far point rule, and so we can apply that here. Um, uh, we can assume that a minus five, con so this is a myopic, myopic person, so it's going to be sort of this scenario. I'll draw it again. Um, we know a myop is going to have a far point 
out in front of the eye and a minus five contact lens. So I'm just gonna put it right smack dab up on the eye. Uh, it's correcting the refractive error. So that means the, um, I'll draw it lightly here so it doesn't get too messy. <clears throat> so this, uh, this lens has a focal point um, right here that matches with the far point of the eye. Uh, we wanna know um, what this distance is and then we'll just move this lens out further. You know, we'll move it 15 millimeters and just make sure it, um, it changed the power so that it still has this exact same far point. So this distance is, so we have a, uh, so the vergence with this light coming in in parallel is zero. And we have minus five, uh, u, u plus d equals v. Zero minus five gives us negative five. So it's a negative, it means it's gonna to be to the left and virtual, we already knew it was to the left. Um, and to what, ex what extent, uh, well, we can go ahead and flip that immediately into a uh, distance, one over five gives us 0.2 meters. Um, and so this is gonna be, this distance right here is 0.2. And, <clears throat> and then in this scenario, um, what we're doing is scooting this lens, uh, we're scooting this lens this direction. Um, and so I'm going to move it like this because we're, he's now getting glasses and we want it to have the same, how far are we scooting it? We're scooting at the vertex distance of 0 0.015 meters. So 115 millimeters is 0 0.15 uh, meters. So now what is our new distance here? It's 0 0.2 minus 0 0.015 which is uh, 0 0.185, 185, and we can flip that back into a, uh, from a distance back into a, um, a vergence, uh, which is going to be um, whatever that is, 5.4 diopters, so that'll be our power, and that'll be D. Number 20, this is basically the same thing. We've got an aphakic patient uh, wearing a plus 10, wants to wear contact lenses, and he gives us the vertex distance of 10 millimeters. So what are the, what's the, gonna be the power of the contact lenses? Okay, so in this scenario, I'll draw it a little bit bigger. Um, we have a an aphakic patient, so you know they're gonna be a, um, a high hyperope. So we know the far point of the eye is gonna be over here. And um, and it's going to be some plus lens uh, that they have in their glasses, okay? And it has the far point of this right here as light's coming in. And that's going to match the, I'm sorry, it's going to have a focal point of this distance, focal dis length of this distance, and we're just going to match the far point of the eye as light's, you know, leaving the eye as I shown, showed earlier. So um, he, we, we know that he, this is a plus 10 lens here. So, and that's our D, our U is zero, parallel light rays coming in. Um, U plus D equals V. So this is gonna be uh, plus 10 vergence. And so we can immediately flip that back over into a distance. Is one over 10 is gonna be 0.1. Uh, meters and um, the uh, so that point so this distance here is 0.1 meters and um, we're going to move the lens in this direction okay so now it's a contact lens that's you know virtually on the eye there and um, so what's the what distance are we moving it? Well, it's going to be the vertex distance, which is 0.1 millimeters or 0.1 meter. I'm sorry, 0 0.01 bits in millimeters, not centimeters. Uh, so we move it 0.01 uh, meters, and that um, so now we have 0.1 minus 0 0.01 is going to equal our new uh, focal distance 
for our new lens, which is going to be 0 0.9, so uh, yeah, 0 0.9 meters, and or 0 0.09 meters. Sorry, I can't do math. And then we can immediately flip that into a power and one over 0 0.09. 11.1 will be our new power for our contact lens. You made it. Three down, one to go. Hang in there. I'll see you next week. Peace.